All right. Hey, thanks guys for joining us today. I've got John Sanderson with me. He is with the Sanderson Olson team at Supreme Lending. And hey, John, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. So good. So, so good to see you. It's been a while since we've seen each other in person. It has. It has. Good you to know. see you too. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, so the, so the hot topic out there that I wanted to share with our people, uh, you know, has to do with interest rates. And, you know, you see so much in the news right now about uh, about what's you know what's happening in the world and so i figured you know if we're going to ask the expert you are absolutely by far the the biggest expert that i know in this field so can wow. you talk to us a little bit about what we're seeing little pressure there <laughs> i know you, I know, you right? might have dialed the wrong number i don't know yeah oh, that's funny <laughs> no no seriously you you are you are absolutely the best around and, and our, our absolute favorite person to work with always so well, thank you anyway I feel the same about the alan sims team Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thanks. Yep. Well, we appreciate that. Well, let's jump into it. So tell me what's going on in the world with uh, world of interest rates. Like what are, what are we seeing out there? Well, good question. Obviously, um, rates have increased from the beginning of the year and um, they started in the threes and now we're somewhere in that five to six range. And the reason I give you that range is just because mortgage rates change on a daily basis. Uh, they can change hourly in some cases. Um, it's just, you know, it's like the stock market. It moves every single day. So there's going to be little fluctuations. The good news is uh, it seems that we've hit kind of a plateau now. So I don't anticipate in the very near future that rates are going to go much higher. But, um, you know, the real buying in real estate, in my opinion, I may be jumping ahead a little bit, but I think that always buying real estate is a good thing. So um, I don't, you know, there's a lot of noise in the, in the press about rates going up and housing market, you know, going through a change. Um, but I think it's kind of overblown personally, but you know, we'll see, we'll see where things go from here. But again, I think that real estate's always a good investment and historically rates are still at a fantastic level. Um, even in that five to six range, I know it's kind of shocking sometimes to hear that, just because we were so used to those low rates for such a period of time. But again, historically, my first house personally, you know, I paid close to 7% on my first house mm -hmm. and that was an adjustable rate. That wasn't even a fixed rate. Huh. So we're talking that's, fixed rates here. So that's awesome. When, when was that? When, when did you buy your first house? That was in probably 96. 96. Okay. 96. That's awesome. I was thinking as, as preparing for this call, I was thinking about the, the first house that I bought. It actually was with you. That's when I met yeah. you. Do you, do yeah. you know, like, yeah, yeah. Well, you did my, you did my first loan for me. My dad sent me over to you and I'm so glad he did. Um, but we had the, we, we were able to do a piggyback. We, we had the two, right. the two loans and our, our rates yes. was in 2005 because we didn't have any money. We were teachers. We didn't have money to buy a house. And so, right. you know, we, we did that and it was um, the first rate was, I think it was like six and a half. And then the second one was like nine and a half percent. It's like, oh my gosh, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, but, uh, but we look back at it and it's like the, the crazy thing when we sold our houses, we, we walked away with a check that was bigger than the price of the house and the purchase exactly. price of the house. It was phenomenal. I love to share that same story. Personally, the first house I put 5% down and I had to work really hard to get to that level. And I did the same thing. I did a piggyback loan mm -hmm. in order mm -hmm. to avoid the mortgage insurance. I don't even right. remember what the rate was on that second <laughs> lien. I'd venture right. to say it was around that 9%. Yeah. And um, that the next house, I put 10% down. And the house after that, where I am now, I put 20% down and have money had money left over. So, mm -hmm. and if I were, you know, in the market to sell now, I'd probably have close to 50% to put down mm -hmm. on a new place. So, right, right. Well, That's it with us. Yeah. It's, you know, real uh, interest rates. Yeah. It's a little bit of a shock, but overall with appreciation of housing over time, under normal circumstances, when you pay your mortgage and you're comfortable with it, you're going to end up doing well. You're building mm -hmm. wealth. It's a great way to and that's it. yeah that's exactly right so we run into you know people all the time that, that are like hey my family's growing i need a new house um mm -hmm. you know or my kids are off to college like that's right. happening right now like we're sending you know families are sending kids off to college uh which i think is hysterical we just had a baby 10 months ago and i've yeah. got friends that are sending kids <laughs> off to college like oh my gosh here we go 
but um but looking at um you know looking at those people that are that are just saying hey like you know we're busting at the seams on our house or we just have too much space and really want to do something you know a little bit smaller or you know that works better for us and and they're they're wanting to you know the 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 general consensus is well we kind of want to wait we want to wait and see what interest rates do and yeah, we tell them all the time from our perspective, like you're, you're looking at, you know, crazy appreciation right now. Like we're still exactly. going through the roof. And um, I think I saw a stat the other day that, that rates are anticipated in Houston or not rates, but the appreciation is anticipated in Houston to continue at like 6% a year for like the next five years, That's you phenomenal. know, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah, which is great. So as far as being a good investment, you know, I think that's awesome. But what would you say to somebody who calls you and says, hey, my family's busting at the seams. Uh, we bought this house five years ago and, and our rate five years ago was, you know, around three and a half percent. You know, but say, when we're busting the seams, like, what do we do? Yeah, I would say, you know, fill, fill your needs. Um, you're not, you're not going to go wrong, in my opinion, with real estate. It's always, you're always, again, building wealth for yourself. Um, I know the rates, the payment may be a little bit higher right now. You know, it's, it's all relative, of course, but um, in the long term, this is like a little bump in the road, maybe, you know, and, you know, there's always opportunities if you, the next house that you move into, if after two years or five years rates go down, if you have a lender that's watching out for your, you know, your well-being, they're going to be calling you and saying, hey, you know, remember we got this mortgage two years, five years ago. It looks like it's a good time to refinance. Well, that's an opportunity then to get that lower rate because eventually it'll happen. We don't know exactly when, but it'll happen. It's, you know, everything is cyclical. Um, you know, it's not as easy to predict like when Christmas comes and the Christmas trees in Walmart and Costco go up and in August now. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, right. predict, can't predict it like that, but it's going to happen. And, you know, there'll be a swing back up again at some point. But the bottom line is you'll be able to refinance if you need to, or if there's an opportunity. And at that point, you will probably have some more equity in your house. And if you, you know, depending on where your life stage is, if you're needing to get some equity out of the property to pay for kids' educations or whatever it may be, there may be that opportunity too at the same time. So yeah, so it'd be like a cash out refi or HELOC or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, the thing is, you know, life, you know, in different stages of our lives, it still goes by relatively quick. And being in a house, you know, three, five years goes by in the blink of an eye, as I'm sure you can relate. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure everybody right. else that's watching right. can relate. Um, and boom, just like that, it's, you know, when you're in a house, you're not really thinking like you might check your 401k every day, or you might check your investment account every day. It's not the kind of thing that you're really looking at and, you know, or attentive to. And then all of a sudden when three to five years passes and you have a situation where you either are refinancing or you need to get equity out or you need to move again, mm -hmm. you're, you're like, wow, look at, I've built some wealth for myself. Mm -hmm. So well, that's one of the coolest things that we see. And I know you see it too, because we deal with, you know, all the same people in the same, you know, business, but, um, you know, people that, that you know, the, the general timeline for home ownership is five to seven years, Exactly. you know, and so, you know, so you get into this, you know, this interest rate now, and you were all freaking out about, you know, rates that are over 5%, um, you know, because we're, we're used to the last, you know, what, four years, five years where it's been, you know, down 4% or even lower than that, you know, it's been crazy. Right. Um, you know, and then we get to the five year point. It's like, oh my gosh, well now <laughs> my kids are five years older and, you know, little kids get bigger and they need more space, you know, and they get more stuff and, you know, or it's just, Hey, it's time to move. Like, you know, I've got a better job. I want to get, you know, better stuff. And then we go to, you know, talk about how much their house is worth. And they're just blown away at the amount of equity they've built up just by paying their mortgage, you exactly. know, just living in a house and paying their mortgage. And it's just phenomenal. And, um, I just, I love to see that. That's, I think that's probably my favorite part of my job is just <laughs> seeing the realization on that oh, and then making it happen, you know? Oh, it is. It is because, you know, when people realize the wealth that they've created for themselves, mm -hmm. it's, it's a happy moment. And, you right. know, the other thing I would say is how many times in our lives have we ever looked back and said, you know, I wish I did this at that time, or I did this mm -hmm. at that time. <laughs> This is one of those moments too. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, you know, yeah, rates are a little bit higher, but the bottom line is you may be kicking yourself down, you know, six <laughs> months or, or a year down the road. Going, well, 
man, I should have, I should have bought that mm -hmm. house at that time. Right. Right. So, you know, and that's yeah. why I, I tell people that all the time too. It's like, you, you don't know what it's going to be like in six months, yeah. you know, from an interest rate standpoint or a home value standpoint, exactly. you know, so if it looks, if it looks good right now and it fits your family's budget and in your lifestyle, you know, goals that you want for yourself, go for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I agree with you. And, and, you know, the facts of home ownership are in your favor. When you mm -hmm. look back at historical data over long periods of time, you're always going to do well in real estate, you know? Love it. Yep. You're, you're always going to do well. I mean, it's, it's proven in, in numbers, statistics, it's, mm -hmm. it's there. It always That's works great. out well. Yep. Well, what about, uh, what about creative options? Like, um, you know, things like an adjustable rate mortgage, you mentioned that, you know, on your first house with an adjustable rate mortgage, um, mm -hmm. would that be a good option for somebody to look at right now, especially if they're going to stay in the house for only five years or so? Yeah. You know, unfortunately at this particular time and point, where we are, the adjustables are not really showing great benefits right now. Uh, in some parts of lending, they are, and it's kind of, believe it or not, it's on the high end, kind of the six hundred and fifty thousand plus. Those type of mortgages, there's a little bit of opportunity for the adjustable rate mortgages, but it's really a technical. There's a technical reason behind it. You see, there's um, treasuries that that trade. And um, the adjustable rates are based on what the treasury is doing at this any particular moment in time. And right now, the, the short term treasuries, I don't want to bore you guys with too much detail, but the short term treasuries are actually yielding a higher, um, higher percentage than the 10 year and the 30 year. And so because of that, there's not an incentive for the lenders to give you a really awesome introductory rate for that three, five, seven, 10 year period of time. So there's not a huge amount of difference. Now, if you know for fact that you're not going to be in the house for more than that, that fixed period of time, that even if it's a small, small amount, it may be an eighth or it may be a quarter lower, then by all means, take that, take that opportunity, you know, but at this particular time, they're not as attractive, but they will over time when th as things balance out. And we're in that balancing period right now. Things are balancing out in the markets. You know, you're, you're seeing the stock market starting to come back. So those are, those are reasons that the lending market too is coming back as far as mm -hmm. like those type of things, the adjustable rates. So I think you'll start to see those become more of an opportunity. But right now, awesome. even those fixed rates, you know, in that five to six range, like I said before, you know, the, I know that's a big range and it has to do with daily fluctuations. It has to do with a lot of other things too, and, you know, down payment size and credit and things like that. But, you know, those are, those again, are in a, a nice stable range right now. We're not seeing big fluctuations up and down. Which okay. Is yeah. So, Talk to us a little bit about uh, about buying down your interest rate. Like, mm -hmm. how, how does how does all of that work? I know there's there's a lot of clients that I have that are just so hung up on that number, and yes. just you know, it's like difference between if I get if I can get five and a half, you know, or I can pay X amount of dollars and get it down to five and a quarter. Like, they get so happy with that. So, can you yes. talk to us a little bit about that? And um, especially what I like about what you do is from an investment standpoint, like it's going to take you X amount of years to get that money back. Yeah, that. Thanks for asking that because that's really you know. It, in some cases, it makes sense to pay that extra to get that insurance of that lower rate that you're wanting to see. Um, but it's a real simple calculation. When you look at the difference between getting, say, like you mentioned, as an example, five and a half or five and a quarter, if it costs you, you know, $5,000 more in closing costs, or points to get that five and a quarter versus the five and a half, but you're only saving maybe $50 a month, that's gonna take you a hundred months before you actually recoup that cost. Mm -hmm. So are you gonna be in the house for at least a hundred months? Which I mean, I'm thinking- It's like eight years. Real quick. That's yeah. like eight, nine years. That's, yeah, a long, yeah, yeah. that's a long time. So mm -hmm. until you actually live in the house that period of time, you're not truly realizing that $50 savings, you know? You're, you're, well, and you, and, you, and you pay, yeah, and, and from, from, you know, my, my mind, you know, from a standpoint of like, oh, I can either, you know, drop $5,000 to save 50 bucks a month for 100 months, or I can take that $5,000 and put it in 
any other investment vehicle. Exactly. I would it makes some extra, extra money, you, right? Yeah. Uh, like if you get into yeah. the house and you find that you want to buy some furniture, right? I'd much rather. Or that. Take, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would much rather you take that five. Personally, I'd mm -hmm. much rather you mm -hmm. take that $5,000 and pay cash for that furniture mm -hmm. than to have saved yourself $50 a month. Mm -hmm. Because if you put the uh, the furniture on credit, you may get one of those nice, you know, zero percent interest for 12 months. And if for some reason you don't hit that right at, you know, pay it off completely at that 12 month period of time, they, they go back and accrue that entire interest over those 12 months. And tack <laughs> right, it on. right. And then right, all right. of a sudden, and then all of a sudden you're paying 5,500 for that furniture. So yeah, it, it's, you know, it's, it's an easy calculation and, um, what one of the things that we like to do for our clients is we put together usually four different options, and that's exactly what we do. We say, mm -hmm. here's your lowest rate, and here's your, your higher rate, and you can see from your total amount of cash to close what that difference is between mm -hmm. each of those different four points or four options, and, you know, it's, it's an easy math calculation, and we usually provide our recommendation based on how long mm -hmm. you're going to be in the house. Sure, sure. Well, and that's all it comes down to, you know, in, in a lot of things that we see too, is like, Hey, I don't want to pay, I don't want to pay five and a half percent for 30 years. It's right. Like, I mean, how many people do you know that paid off their 30 year mortgage I, over 30 years in 30 I, years? I really don't. I, I can't honestly say I know yeah. a soul that has done that. Right, right, right. Yeah. I think I know like three people, you know, and they're all, they're like my parents' friends. There's, you know, yes, there, there, <laughs> there are so many things in life that happen that prevent somebody from going through that entire mm -hmm. 30 year paying every single payment. And, you know, it's, it's different life stages. It's, there's a whole host of things, you know, you get transferred or you, you refinance. And mm -hmm. then, I mean, right, imagine right, right. if you paid that $5,000 and for some reason rates go down back to three not saying mm -hmm. that's going to happen in the near future, but if it did, you paid that $5,000 and you're not going to get that back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, there, there's those things. It, it's, yeah, it gets to be, you know, you can split hairs a lot of different ways. Well, yeah, and it, it's, it's all a game and it's just like anything yeah. else in life. Like if you have a, an expert advisor to get you through things, you right. know, trust, trust what the experts say that, that do this, you know, yes. literally all day, every day. Well, you know, investing in a house is kind of like that old commercial, set it and forget it. Because man, when you, <laughs> that's when, right. <laughs> you know, when you forget about it and then when it's time to do something, you're mm -hmm. pleasantly surprised. Right. Oh my gosh. I love it. Okay. So, um, so myth busting, we're getting into myth busting with Alan Sims real estate. That's one thing okay. we're going we're to start doing just real estate myths that are out there. So, um, right. so well, let's start just with like whack-a-mole. So no, I know, I know, right? No, no, no. This is just one, one little question for you to, to get out. Sure. Of. Again, this is you know just coming coming from the expert in the field. Um, yeah. You know, the, the the biggest myth that I hear, biggest roadblock that a lot of people think, especially younger younger people, um, first time home buyers whose parents you know maybe didn't have options when they bought their house, and those are the guys who are advising them before they get to talk to people like you and me. Sure. Um, so the myth is, hey, I got to have twenty percent down yes. payment to buy a house. So tell me, tell me about, tell me about that. Is, is that, is that a myth? Is that, is that real? That is, is it, we'll be like, that is like myth busters. Is it possible? <laughs> yes. Yes. We are going to bust that myth right ah, now. There we go. <laughs> Absolutely bust that myth. I so that. I'm really glad you asked that because that's a great, great question. First time home buyers, you, you know, the world is your oyster, as they say, you have so many options. Um, you know, first time home buyers on the conventional side, you know, there's different types of loans. I don't want to get in, sure, into the right. dirt with that, but let's just put it this way. Conventional is the most common loan and first time home buyers can put 3% down. And, you know, depending on where your credit is, if your credit is really good, the, even though you have to have mortgage insurance in that case, because if you put the, I think that whole myth comes from the fact that if you put 20% down, you don't have to worry about mortgage insurance, okay? You put anything less than that, you do. But the good news is the history or the industry has evolved over history. Um, and mortgage insurance now is, it depends on your overall picture. If your picture is, you know, strong with good credit and things like that, the mortgage insurance is really not that cumbersome. It's, you know, it is something that you pay and, you know, it doesn't have a direct benefit to you necessarily, but 
you know, it allows you to put 3% down too. So, um, you know, great opportunity, 3% down. Mm -hmm. FHA is another type of loan. I mentioned conventional FHA is another one. And FHA is a little bit more lenient from a credit standpoint, uh, those kind of things. And it's geared towards first time home buyers and it's only requires three and a half percent down. Mm -hmm. So, and then the other thing, and this, this lands back on the negotiation side um, is, you know, potentially you could maybe get a little bit of a, uh, mm -hmm. seller credit perhaps to right, help defray right. some of those costs to bring it down even further. And the good news is you can get gift um, funds for all of these type of loans. So if that's an option too, you know. Um, yeah. So you're talking about a, fam a family member or somebody yep. giving you some, you know, gifting you a down payment or exactly. part, part of a down payment. Right. Exactly. Yeah. If it's towards closing costs mm -hmm. or towards you know, the down payment, whatever it may be, you can get gift mm -hmm. funds. So that's a good thing. So that's yeah, awesome. I mean, it, and you know, again, that, that goes back to both of our situations when we were talking about us personally with our mm -hmm. housing experience, you were scraping to put together 5%. I was doing the same, mm -hmm. you know, that was what was available at the time. Right. Now they have 3%. I would have gone with 3% had it mm -hmm. been available to me, but at that time it was five. So I, you know, save to get that 5% down. And again, next house, boom, 10% down. Mm -hmm. Next, the house after that, 20% down with money left over. And now sitting right. where I am now, again, probably 50% to put down on the mm -hmm. next house. So right. yeah, it's just a, it's a wealth building process. Yeah. So it's, yeah. you know, it may be that 3% that you do up front, the first house, but mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's to be expected. You're a first time right. home buyer. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big thing. It, it is. <laughs> it's a big yeah. thing you're buying. You're not going to Walmart. Like it's a, it's a big deal. Yeah. yeah, this is. It's a great, great opportunity to invest in yourself and your future. I love it. I love it. Man, John, thanks for being here today. Can you give us uh, just in closing any uh, sure. any advice, any information? Uh, let us know how to get in touch with you, like all that stuff. Well, uh, you know, you can always contact Jack because he's got my Absolutely. contact info. So I'd, be, I'd love to talk to you. You know. Please, uh, the way we approach our business is um, we want to be able to give advice and, and help people. So if there's questions, you know, you don't have to be doing a mortgage right now or you don't have to be buying a house. If you have questions, call us because we're happy to talk to you. And, you know, if, if you need a roadmap or whatever it may be, just give us a call. We're happy to help. Mm -hmm. Absolutely happy to help. And again, try to put some filters on your, your listening to the news. It's, mm -hmm. There's a lot of hype out there. I mean, we all know that there's a lot of things that are kind of blown out of proportion these days. And what you're hearing in the real estate market perhaps is, is similar to that. You know, there's, yeah, things have changed a little bit and, you know, they may have gone in a little bit of a different direction, but the bottom line is, when you're into, the, you're in this for a long term. I mean, this is not something you're mm -hmm. not, you know, maybe if you're flipping properties, it might be a little bit different, but if you're, mm -hmm. if this is your home, this is something that's long term and you're just yeah. going to, you, you're going to build on it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, you may think this is your forever home. If you're a first time home buyer, it's not going to be, I can assure you, you're going to find, some, you're going to get to a point in your life where you're like, wow, this is really manageable. <laughs> And, right. you know, our income is going up mm -hmm. and now we want to get something a little bit bigger or our family has expanded, whatever it may be. Yeah. So awesome. Yes. Yeah, I love it. John, thanks for being here today. It's always so good to see you. It's always hey. good to see you, even even on the computer screen. <laughs> well, thanks. It's always great to talk to you guys. You're yeah. super, super professional. And, you know, you've got um, a great service for your clients. So awesome. And, and it makes it a great uh, team team effort. Awesome. Well, you're part of that team. We appreciate you. All righty. Thanks. All right. All right. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, John. Alrighty.